So a little while ago, I made a video about upgrading to the Canon EOS R6 and how great it was. This isn't it, this is my Canon EOS R, I just wanted to have something to hold while I was talking to you guys. In my video, I talked about how great the Canon EOS R6 is and what an upgrade it would be in terms of the video content that I create using it because it's got fantastic 4K video, it's got C-Log3, it's got amazing autofocus and in-body stabilization. It's all the things that I wanted out of a camera for my content creation. But there were a couple of things that I didn't like about the R6 and eventually they pushed me to sell them. As you can see from the title of this video, yes, I have gotten rid of the Canon EOS R6 because I just kind of didn't want it. I reverted back to using my Canon EOS R for quite a while now. And I, I mean, I have no regrets with that. So like I said, I just want to make it a point that it wasn't an issue with the Canon EOS R6's quality or anything like that. These are more my issues with the camera that I had that made it not so nice to use. Before I move on guys, I just want to say that this video is brought to you by Epidemic Sound. Epidemic Sound is a platform where you can download copyright free, royalty free music to use in your videos. It's a subscription service. Subscribing to it gives you access to all of the content on their site, all of the music on their site. You can use it for any of your videos and you will not get a copyright strike, whether it be on Twitch or on YouTube or whatever platform that you're using it on. So it's a fantastic tool to use because let's face it, Everybody wants good music in their videos and you can definitely get good music from them. Hit that link in the description box down below and you'll get a 30 day free trial from Epidemic Sound. So what are you waiting for? You can check it out for yourself, see how good it really is. Now back to the R6. One of the big issues that I had, and this was actually one of my biggest gripes with the camera, was the limitation that it had with its modes. So you can see here on the Canon EOS R, you've got this little LCD, LCD display. LED display, LCD display. Um, it's got a little display up here and a mode button. And that basically allows you to toggle between all of the photo and video modes in turn and gives you access to all of your custom modes. The R6 has the more traditional camera dial at the top, which allows you to toggle between each of the modes through the dial, right? Now on that dial, you have three custom modes and those custom modes, and this is where my problem is, could only be set to photography. So meaning that they were all photo modes. You can't set them for your video work. Meaning that any of the custom video modes you want to set, can't do it. Only works for photo, only works for stills. So that was a big problem because one of the main reasons I bought the camera was to use it as a video camera, to, was to use it for my video content. Because despite getting the R6, I still used my Canon EOS R as my primary camera for stills. So whenever I did an event or a job or uh, any of my professional work, it was always using this when it came to photography. For video, I used the R6. However, that limitation of not having custom modes was a massive deal breaker for me because just in terms of ease of use and convenience, having custom modes for video is so fantastic because I can set it to one for 24 FPS, which is what I film most of my general a roll video in one for 60 fps or 120 fps for my b-roll video or whatever else that i want to set my custom modes to to make my video workflow better and easier especially once i'm on the go but instead what i was having to do is go into the menus manually change my resolution manually change my frame rate and shutter speed and everything like that and it was really annoying because if i needed to get a quick shot of something that i knew were needed a bit more slow motion or something was happening whilst I'm out and about if I'm vlogging or if I'm doing uh, a shoot then I wouldn't be able to change it so quickly so that was a massive massive deal breaker for me the fact that the custom modes on the R6 didn't have you know you didn't have the option of setting video modes to them it was limited to just your stills and just your photography like generally probably the number one reason why i found it really annoying to use that camera now the second reason was related more to the functionality of the camera and this was specifically regarding the 120 fps mode now as a content creator i love filming stuff in slow-mo now 60 fps is fantastic with the canon eos r i can film things in 60 fps slow it down and it still looks really really good it's a bit more challenging you have to be more be more creative and careful with what you're filming. And it's fantastic. It's a really good way to improve your filmmaking, to kind of uh, improve your filmmaking skills rather. And um, I love it. But having 120 FPS, you can't beat that. 120 FPS or above is absolutely fantastic, especially if you want that really nice, juicy, slow-mo, B-roll segments that you get. But 
The one thing that was a problem with the R6 is that the 120 FPS mode was limited to only 1080p. Now, if you compare that to the cameras like the R5, or actually, let's forget about the R5, cameras in the same kind of price range, especially newer ones that have come out, such as the Sony a7 IV, they have 4K and 120 FPS. For some reason, the R6 is limited to 1080p, 120 FPS, and that's a little bit of a deal breaker again for me because, you know, if I'm filming most of my stuff in 4K, which with that camera, why wouldn't I? You get full frame 4K, almost full frame 4K out of it. If I'm filming all of my 30 FPS or 24 FPS or 60 FPS content in 4K, then I have to kind of downgrade to 1080p to film my 120 FPS stuff. It is a bit of a deal breaker. I mean, it kind of, you're sacrificing a little bit of the quality and it just, it just, it was just a bit, little, little bit annoying that Canon did that. Now I'm not sure exactly the reason behind why they did that. I'm pretty sure with the sensor and the processor that that camera it comes packed with, you can handle 120 FPS at 4K. But I'm not going to go into that. It was one of the big reasons that I felt that I just kind of, you know, it was, it was disrupting my workflow a little bit and uh, I just wasn't happy about it. Now the third reason, and this is probably the final reason was that even filming in 4K 24 FPS, I was getting that overheating warning after long periods of filming. Now if I'm filming a YouTube video at home in the setting that I've got right here, then it shouldn't be doing that. Now originally I didn't think that the R6 didn't have as bad of an overheating issue as the R5 was rumored to have. But that being said, there were multiple times where I was filming and um, you know, if I was doing a long filming session where I was kind of doing a lot of bunch of stuff, filming in 4K 60, 120, or filming a lot of my roll segments, a lot of my videos, my talking head videos, or whatever else it was I was doing, at that point the camera was getting quite hot and once or twice it had shut down. Now that was more of a minor reason. It was less of a problem because you know, if I'm at home, I can't just kind of shut it down. But if I'm out and about and I'm doing a project or I'm with a client and I'm filming for a client and that happens and that's a bad idea. So yeah, I just didn't want to risk that happening. So there you have it guys. Those are a couple of reasons why I sold my Canon EOS R6, regardless of it being such a fantastic camera for both stills and photography. Now, if you don't have those problems with it, like I'm pretty sure the overheating thing is very minor, to be honest, the couple of times that it did happen were times when I was filming in quite hot conditions because it was during the heat waves and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, it's probably due to that that the camera heat overheated rather than any problems with the camera itself. But everything else, if you don't have an issue with 120 FPS like 1080 or limited to being at 1080 or you don't have any issues with the custom modes of the dials, I still think that the R6 is an absolute fantastic camera. And for the price point and the quality that you're getting, it is an absolute steal. Like it's a really, really good quality camera that rivals things like the R5 even in terms of the camera quality. Um, you know, it's a very close second to the R5. It doesn't have the 8K raw capabilities or filming 4K in all eye or HQ mode. It's a bit more limited in the video sense, but overall as a kind of a hybrid camera, if you're gonna be using it for both photography and video, then it's a fantastic camera. It's great in low light. It has C-Log 3, it's got everything you need. However, it was just not for me. I just it was a bit of an annoying camera for me to use. That's all it is. Now, if you guys wanna see more videos on things like cameras or gadgets or anything else, then make sure you hit one of those links up on the screen right now. Until next time, guys, this is Kai24, signing out.